Good evening. Thank you for being here again tonight. Um, again, Scott Ellers, the spelling on the last name is E-H-L-E-R-S, Fire Chief with Clearwater Fire and Rescue. Uh, let me start off by saying first that um, please uh, understand that we, we're working through a, a very complicated uh, scene. Uh, there's going to be a lot of agencies that are here and are going to be responding in to help coordinate in, in the investigation of actually what happened. So we're limited on some of the information we can provide, but we'll do our best to get you the, the, the right up-to-date information. Uh, earlier this evening at uh, 1908, 7.08 p.m., uh, we received a, uh, for the fire department a uh, report of a structure fire here in Bayside, uh, Bayside Estates, which is uh, known for a long time as Japanese Gardens. It's a very uh, large uh, mobile home park. Um, simultaneously, the um, ARF units or the aircraft units uh, out of Clearwater St. Pete Airport also received a, uh, a note of response regarding a aircraft that had some trouble. Um, during that conversation with their tower, their tower lost it off a of radar and at three miles north of the uh, runway and some of the ARF units responded this way when they saw the, uh, the fire. Uh, our units got on scene at 19 Oh, I'm sorry, so 1908, 1915 or 715 uh, was our initial units on scene and the aircraft response vehicles were right behind them. Uh, that's critical because those aircraft response vehicles are designed to put larger fires out. And that was a critical component of maintaining the, uh, this mobile home park uh, to, to what we, we kept it to. Uh, the crews did a phenomenal job in getting the fire knocked down very quickly and um, it ensued several structures, three definitely that had some uh, fire damage, a fourth one with possibility of fire damage. The um, aircraft was found in the um, one structure, pre predominantly right in that one structure. Um, we are working through right now the element of decide, uh, trying to get to the hot spots, but also to try and get to fatalities. I can confirm that we have several fatalities, both from the aircraft and within the mobile home. Uh, we're still working to, uh, to make sure that there is no additional and we, it, it's limited to what we do know right now. Um, as we continue, we'll, again, we'll provide that information. Along with us is uh, Clearwater Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, the Airport Authority, the um, F, uh, NTSB, the FAA are all responding as well because at, at one point we need to switch from what we're doing of search and rescue as well as fire control into a, a investigative mode and that goes to law enforcement. Um, at, and that's pretty much it where we're at. I will turn it over to Chief Gandy who will probably be able to provide you some more of that. Evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Gandy, uh, Chief of Police of the City of Clearwater. Uh, last name is G-A-N-D-Y. Um, in a case of this nature, uh, my units responded to the scene to support uh, Clearwater Fire Department uh, because we were reported as a single uh, structure fire uh, and then potentially involving several trailers and a aircraft crash. Uh, in a situation such as this, uh, we provide the support initially, secure the scene to allow the fire department to work, rescue victims, and suppress the fire. So that was the initial phase of uh, the deployment here. Once the fire is contained and we've searched for victims and identified any of the decedents or locations for decedents, the scene is turned over to law enforcement and we coordinate with our federal partners, the NTSB and FAA, to continue the investigation. View this, if you will, as a serious uh, traffic crash, one of our traffic homicide crashes. That's how we approach these scenes. Scene preservation is critical. And because we're here before FAA and NTSB, it's our responsibility to ensure in the scene's integrity. So that's what my units are doing. We're ensuring that the scene is secure and maintained. We work with the medical examiner's office to remove any victims and work on victim identification. We work to uh, find any witnesses so that we can turn all of that information over to our federal partners. Clearly, local law enforcement doesn't determine causality and causation with aircraft crashes, but we help to maintain the scene integrity and conduct a preliminary investigation for our federal partners. Clearly, we're not in a position now. We, we are just now finished. The fire department has just now finished knocking down some of these hot spots for us. We haven't been, even, been able to get into the scene to effectively assess uh, the totality of it at this point. As Chief Eller said, we do have 
visually several fatalities on the ground um, and we'll be working through that scene as the night progresses to further clarify what we have and secure that scene for NTSB and FAA's arrival later in the evening. I'm not going to take any questions at this point because we're really not in a position to do so. Um, we will brief you at another point in time. We won't do another an on camera tonight. We've been asked by the trailer park that the media clears the trailer park. Rob will talk to you guys about that. It's a private trailer park, so he'll have a conversation with you as our liaison with the media, uh, but that's been the request from the trailer park ownership at this point. So we would ask that you respect that. We will try and find locations for you on the perimeter of the, of the, the place, but at this point we're not going to do another on-camera on-scene inside the park unless something changes and we'll certainly let you know. Thank you.